when we think of the Walt Disney Company, we picture the best theme park in the world. You know, the theme park enterprise, ranking number one worldwide, beating SeaWorld, Universal, heck, any other theme park. People flock to the Disney parks, myself formally included. So it baffles me in the year 2021 where I can actually say that Disney is cheap. Now, what do I mean by cheap? No, it's not cheap getting in, of course. The prices are as crazy as they have ever been. Actually worse. No, the quality, the quality experience found within these parks has become cheap. A lot of people, myself included, believe that the Disney brand has lost its magic. But before we continue, let's please hit 10 likes on this video. I would hugely appreciate it. Nevertheless, shall we? The Disney company growing up was amazing in my eyes. I thought nothing could top it. Nothing could touch this beautiful, beautiful company. The attractions were just top notch. Sure, we had a couple roadblocks here and there. Some attractions could have been better. But the majority of the rides were made with very, very top-notch Imagineer skills. These rides ooze with personality and took you into different experiences and different stories that you would never see in the real world. They spared no expense with most of their attractions. We did have a couple duds, such as Superstar Limo, but these were very minimal attractions. Today, in 2021, we currently already have two duds. And there's a, a lot more if you plan on counting them. One dud is the recent Marvel superhero, whatever you want to call it, opening in California Adventure. Now, this is a major blow for Disney. The land is made on the cheap. The Spider-Man attraction is no better than any ride at Legoland. The Lego Ninjago ride has actually been compared to this ride, and a lot of people say it's better. That's really sad, coming from a company that made the Haunted Mansion, Pirates of the Caribbean, and of course, Space Mountain. Back then, those attractions were jaw-droppingly amazing. Now, we're getting rides that are lamer than a Lego ride in Legoland. And don't get me wrong, I like Legoland. So that's sad that Disney is actually being compared to a park that makes less money and is less, you know, bigger. It's, it's, it's not as big. That's not the only done, unfortunately. The Jungle Cruise at Disneyland recently was having its soft opening. Disney, well, Bob Chapek, promised that the new Jungle Cruise would be less sensitive and more adventurous and would focus on Alberta Falls and all of the characters from the Jungle Cruise. They even said that we would have an animatronic narration that would follow us on the ride, plus brand new jaw-dropping scenes. What did we get? A boat full of chimps and then chimps with butterflies. These are the only scenes, and it's extremely out of place. It reminds me of the Jingle Cruise when they updated the ride for the holidays, where they added some things in. We also had Trader Sam's Shack, which was added in recently, and was finally shown on the soft opening. This is horrible, and makes Disney out to be hypocrites, because... They claim that Trader Sam is so racist, yet they continue keeping his name on the top of the shack. Reasons? Well, they don't care. They don't care about SJWs. They don't care about feminists. They only remove things because of profit. And that's the only reason. But the attraction itself is lacking. The new attraction of the Jungle Cruise has that lack of magic, that lack of toughness that the original ride had it's no longer with an edge it's pushed off the edge off the river off the waterfall the edge is gone and from what i saw in the soft opening 
It is horrible. The skippers seem wooden. And yes, they are still practicing because of the new script, the new stuff that they've put in this ride. But there's no excuse. It was playing out bad. Nobody looks happy. Nobody has any passion. The skippers sound tired. The jokes don't land. Did they ever land? Well, it depends on who you are. Personally, me, I love the bad puns because it's what Walt enjoyed back in the 60s when he updated the ride. However, now it just feels like the edge has been taken off. Jungle Cruise wasn't supposed to be this culturally huge thing. Disney now is claiming that Jungle Cruise is supposed to be this cultural, beautiful thing that's supposed to represent diversity in the world. When in reality, Jungle Cruise was just supposed to be a parody on adventure films of the 1930s. Unfortunately, the person I blame here is Bob Chapek. This man, ever since he has been CEO... The park has become even cheaper than its downfall when Bob Iger was running it. Don't get me wrong, Bob Iger was bad. And even though a lot of his rides were mediocre, they still had a lot of passion. With Bob Chapek, there's no passion. There's no love. It's all a political stint, a political agenda, and a movement to destroy the Walt Disney Company and just destroy legacies. It's not only within the Disney company, it's within everything. And, you know, the saying goes, you go woke, you go broke. And ladies and gentlemen, it gets even worse. Under Bob Iger, a few years ago, it was announced that Ratatouille was coming to Epcot. Now, a lot of people are excited about this ride. Personally, I could care less. This ride is years old. It opened, I believe, in 2010 at Disneyland Paris. If you think a ride that opened back in 2010 is going to impress me, you think wrong. I'm all for a Ratatouille ride. Well, I was before I left the Disney company. I was all for a Ratatouille ride. I mean, Ratatouille is one of my favorite Pixar films. It's wonderful. It's beautiful. It's masterful. It's cozy. It's magical. But copying a ride from Disneyland Paris is lazy when you look at it from a technology standpoint. Technology has advanced way more than it did back in 2010. The technology today is far crazier and superior to a 2010 ride. Well, at least I think so. I don't know anymore after looking at Spider-Man. But yeah, it's supposed to be more technologically advanced. So why are we getting a clone this late? This ride should have came out around 2014 or 2015, but it's 2021. That is sad. Very, very sad. Another issue I'm having is the Tron attraction. Now, don't get me wrong. When I was still a fan of Disney, I was excited for the Tron ride because we're finally getting a true thrill ride in Magic Kingdom. But then again, there's no theming to this attraction. You literally ride through the world of Tron, but that's it. There's no story. There's no magic to it. It's just a Space Mountain ripoff. If Space Mountain wasn't in the park, like at Shanghai, I would be fine with it. But it is in the park. Shanghai doesn't have a Space Mountain, so therefore, the ride is perfectly fine. Tron is okay in Shanghai because it's their technologically advanced version of Space Mountain. But that's not the same thing going on here in Magic Kingdom. Not only this, but Seven Dwarfs Mine Train was extremely cheap back when it opened. But like I said, the theming is what saved those rides. Today, the theming is not even good. It's, it's not even good. The Jungle Cruise, the new Jungle Cruise, I like to call it Woke Jungle Cruise, is baffling to me. It removed the headhunters because they claimed it was racist when... It wasn't at all. It was showing a culture that was deep in the jungle that we've never, ever come into contact before. If they actually had an actual name to these people, if they called them 
an actual name that existed in the real world, then yeah, I could see why it's maybe sensitive. But the headhunters, they're just random indigenous people that could exist out there in the world. And they do exist out, in the, uh, exist out there in the world. And I think it's hypocritical that Disney is removing cultures. And it's hypocritical that Disney is destroying. But thank you for watching, everyone. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, and goodbye.